it's Marcus. Today I'm going to be talking about IB economics and giving you seven tips to help you get that seven in economics, whether it be in higher level or standard level. So this is the second part of the series where I talk about how to maximize your IB grades or IB predicted grades, where in the first video I covered chemistry and you can check it up there. So let's get straight into it. So my first tip is for when you start studying, is to scope the subject before you start. Now, economics can seem like quite a daunting subject, with very large topics and large chunks of information being thrown at you, and sometimes it's hard to come to grips with everything that's encompassed within the topic. Also, when you have to revise a whole topic for a test, often you will have to revise for things that you covered almost six months ago, and that stuff has basically faded from your memory completely. So, it is very important that you scope the subject beforehand. Now, how do you scope a subject? What this consists of is going through the syllabus and going through the textbook, or potentially a more summarized version, maybe your notes, and laying everything out that the topic consists of in front of you. Now you can do this using a mind map where you write the topic name in the center and then you branch off to different areas of the topic and connect these areas to make a huge spider web to show how everything in economics interlinks together within the topic. You can also do this creating a set of really concise notes where you summarize everything basically on a page with little diagrams and stuff. Or you can use another sort of visual aid where you lay everything in the topic out so that mentally the whole topic is clear to you and you understand exactly what you have to know. So the second tip with economics is when you are doing te tests or exams or anything of the sort, which is to define first. Everything in economics, whether it be a paper one or an IA, requires you to define the key terms and the key concepts beforehand. And you have to treat the examiner as if they have no prior knowledge to the subject. So that way you define everything that you need to define so that you really get the best grades and so that the examiner knows exactly what you're talking about and that they know that you know what you're talking about. When you get a question or a task, you can look at the title and you can pick out the key words such as externalities or tariffs and you can take these and then you define them. Even if the question doesn't ask you to do so, defining is a key part of economics and you have to do so in all components of the subject. If you need to study these definitions, then you can just make an Anki deck for economics definitions and then study them until you're completely familiar with basically all of them. So tip three is to use your diagrams. This applies to the first part of a paper one and also to parts B and C of paper two, where they specifically always ask you to use a diagram to help explain your answer. So what I mean by use your diagrams is not only draw the diagrams out and show the shifts and stuff. What I mean is in the text that is alongside the diagram, refer back to the diagram and explain that you are shifting this line to this because this is happening. What this does is it shows the examiner that you understand exactly how the diagrams work and you didn't just memorize the diagram and draw it out and then not really talk about it in your main body of text. This part is typically really easy to do and it can really guarantee you those 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10 marks in the paper 1 section A, as well as those 4 out of 4s consistently in paper 2's parts B and C. So tip 4 is about evaluations, where my tip is to make sure that you conclude. In paper 1 part B and in paper 2 part D, there is 15 mark question and an 8 mark question respectively. And these questions are always asking you to evaluate something, whether it be a policy that a country is implementing or whether it be a view that a certain economist holds. There are several different niche methods that you can evaluate something in economics, but the most important is that you analyze two different sides of the argument and pitch them against each other as if you were in a debate. Then, at the end, you have to make a reasoned conclusion and evaluate what view you believe to be true, and you have to explain this view. Now, how you can do this is you can spare a paragraph at the end to say, in conclusion, I believe that this policy is the most effective because so and so. If you don't come to this reasoned conclusion, then according to the mark scheme, you can only score about a maximum of a five. And if you really want to get those top grades, that's not enough. So coming to a reasoned conclusion at the end of your argumentation is vital. My fifth tip is about paper two, where my tip is to refer back to the text. So this paper is all about the extract that they give you, and you should always be making constant references to the text in whatever question you're writing and whatever, and whatever you're explaining. How I suggest you do this is you write in little brackets next to something that you are referring to, P5 or P6, as a reference back to the different paragraphs that what you are talking about is in. What this shows is that you read the text and you understand 
how the text links to whatever you are arguing or whatever you are explaining in paper two. And this allows the examiner to see, ah, this person really understands the ins and outs of this paper and they understand how to analyze a piece of text and use it in their own explanations of something. Constantly, I see people losing marks with the teachers writing, refer back to the text, refer back to the text, and this is really important. I've done papers where I've gotten four out of eight in part D just because I didn't refer back to the text enough. So I cannot stress how important this is for paper two. So my sixth tip is about the IA and picking a good news article. Now this is tough and people often spend hours and hours looking through news articles and not really finding anything interesting. However, what I would suggest is to go onto Google and go onto the news section and then go onto tools and press in the last year. Then what you do is you search the key terms that you are looking to do your IA in, such as tariffs in inverted commas. And what this does is it forces Google to search for news articles published in the last year, which have to have the word tariffs in the headline or something. Then I would look for respectable sources such as the BBC or Reuters and click on them to see if the article interests me. If you aren't sure about the source you've chosen, I would suggest asking your teacher about whether the source is trustworthy or not, because sometimes this can change the quality of the article and thus change the quality of your evaluation. You also have to make sure that the article you choose is not analytical, nor is it evaluatory. So the article only has descriptive or informative stuff which you can then take and analyze it and evaluate it yourself. For this reason, I would suggest not using sources such as The Economist because they go into a lot of detail and you might be left just copying what the article says and not coming up with any unique evaluations and that's a big red flag to the examiner. I would say pick a short, descriptive article which gives you plenty of room to analyze. The article doesn't have to be overcomplicated and often the simplest articles make the best IAs. So my seventh tip is to really study your diagrams because diagrams are at the center of economics. And if you know and understand how your diagrams work, then the text and the explanations can just be extracted from the diagrams. Particularly, learn the diagrams of theory of the firm for higher level and really make sure that you know the ins and outs of these diagrams because most essays do contain at least one or two diagrams and the essays are normally based around these diagrams. So I would suggest really take the time and learn these diagrams to the fullest extent. So the way to study these diagrams, I would say, is to just test yourself in drawing them. Um, you can use flashcards for this, um, preferably hand-drawn ones because online it might be a bit strange having diagrams drawn on the computer and I don't really like it personally. You could also just test yourself and ask yourself to draw the different diagrams of theory of the firm or the different diagrams relating to externalities and then you draw them out at regular intervals just to remind yourself of these diagrams and make sure that you have them in your memory. So these were my seven main tips to getting a seven in economics. And if you found value in this video, then please consider subscribing and dropping a like, as well as turning on the notification bell so that you get notified when I do post more videos. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.